एवरीवन एंड ओवर टू यू नितिन जी शुड आई मेक यू द होस्ट संध्या जी मेक मी द होस्ट आई विल डू द रेस्ट या थैंक्स थैंक यू प्रकाश जी फॉर अ वंडरफुल सेशन लाइक ऑलवेज एंड राधे राधे गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू टूडेज एडिशन ऑफ डेली विजडम फ्रॉम भगवद गीता सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन करम योग एंड करम संन्यास सो विल विल कंटिन्यू ऑन दैट जर्नी एंड गो अ लिटल डीपर एज वी एव बिन डूइंग सो looking forward to another engaging session with all of you so let's get started i'm going to share my screen and uh, let me know when you see it we'll get started with our opening prayers are you able to see my screen okay yes, yes. wonderful so we'll get started with our opening prayers like we always do so sick All right. So, Radhe Radhe, once again, let's get started. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha, Guru Sakshat Par Brahma, Tasmay Shri Guru Ve Namaha. वसुदेव सुत कंसचाणुर्मर्दनम देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगदुर कृष्ण वंदे जगदुर All right. So, Radhe Radhe. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. Let's get started with our soul soup segment, like we always do. So, we've been talking about success, happiness, and fulfillment series, and we are building on the price for success. Price. We have to pay a price for everything, and uh, even in the material world, and this is no different in the spiritual world as well. Nothing comes free. and there is no free lunches so willingness to tolerate discomfort is what we spoke about yesterday we looked at the example of edwin moses if we are willing to tolerate pain better than others then there is an opportunity it is an opportunity utilized for personal growth inner growth more to say so the focus that uh, we have around external thing that needs to be shifted towards in our growth right we think acquiring things or material and e economic advancement external advancements is a yardstick for success but from a spiritual standpoint inner growth growth is the key thing the inner growth is what pleases god and guru and when we put in hard work when we put in discipline that is needed around it that also comes with our ability to tolerate pain because the path may not be comfortable at times right so when we are able to tolerate it that like it says that growth happens at the end of the comfort zone now it's a universal prerequisite for success we spoke about it yesterday now now building self control is the key what is the enabler if we think about it what enables us to tolerate comfort discomfort it is the self control and self control um is a great asset to have and let me tell you a story around it okay not about self control but the fact that how you know when we build these these uh, virtues ground up either enforced by circumstances or through our own prudence using our prudence we are really nicely served now here you see a giraffe and the baby right now this is a beautiful example swami ji quotes around you know willingness to tolerate pain and then when when we are in discomfort actually how it helps us so in african savanna okay so in african savanna when the mama giraffe gives birth to the calf okay she does not sit on the ground for delivery 
she's start standing on her tall legs as you can see you know the legs are pretty tall and when the baby falls to the ground from a height of about you know nine nine feet or so giraffe's height and the poor calf when it is dropped down on the ground it curls up on the hard earth but mama's heart does not melt on seeing the pain of her child she kicks her baby with her hard hooves okay that's what it does now the the baby calf it cringes in agony rolling over the ground and and you know it gets up mama giraffe still does not relent okay she kicks her baby again and knocks it to the ground and then the baby is forced to get up on its feet now this harsh behavior by mama, mama giraffe it seems very cruel to us if you look at it but mother knows that the child has only few minutes to learn how to walk before the lions come and there is no time for it the indulgence at all loving indulgence that you know there's no space for that at all now there's no time to enjoy the bliss of curling up right like we would like to curl up with babies there's no time at all there to the ground and then the child in turn it learns to ignore that pain for the sake of survival so what did it do it, it has to tolerate the pain it's forced to do that and it is needed for its survival as well okay so sometimes so we underestimate the importance of self self control in children but if we teach them not like a mama giraffe where we are whacking them but in our own subtle ways then that will help us help them build a lot of self control down the line as well when we simply cater like mama does that even in the material world right when the child is too hung up in playing sometimes the toy is snatched away so that the child can focus on studies or the food is it bad for them is it cruel behavior it is not and that is what god also does that okay sometimes he brings out the velvet glove sometimes the iron glove so that iron glove whenever it is brought it is for our welfare only that beautiful bhajan is there right teri kripa to kripa hai pyari tera koop bhi kripa hai pyari so god and saints they can only do their activity actions whatever they do or perform is motivated with only one desire because they have nothing for themselves to achieve they have already attained that perfect happiness that we have been craving for so now every activity that they do is motivated by welfare of others or the kripa aspect of it okay so that's what we need to understand so guru when guru scolds you or give you a tough task or even when god is not behaving with you as you would like then it's not a time to get upset with god that god i have become cutty with you i have been praying to you for so long and you have been doing so many unfavorable things to me okay all the material things which should have given me comfort and convenience you are just turning it against me then we have to be rest assured he's doing the job of the mama giraffe as you see in this case right and we need to be able to tolerate pain and when we tolerate pain gracefully then it takes us uh, forward in our spiritual journey so that is the price we have to pay in order for us to uh, evolve and not devolve okay now let's get to the shloka 5 2 i'm going to recite it you're welcome to follow along shri bhagavan uvacha संन्यास कर्म योगश्च निश्रेय सकरावुभो तयोस्तु कर्म संन्यास्यात कर्म योगो विशिष्यते लेट्स टेक अ फ्यू हैंड्स अ वेलकम बैक पल्लवी जी योर कोहोस्ट आई थिंक यू कैन टेक ओवर Adi Adi Pallavi yeah. ji, welcome Adi back. Adi. Good to see you. You had a good trip to Bharat. Yes, it was wonderful, and I'm so happy to be back in the sessions. And sorry for uh, my delay. Uh, some technical issues going on. My laptop is not working, so I had to use another machine. It's All right, thank you so much. All right, I can see a couple of hand raised. So please go ahead, Rahul ji, Radhe Radhe. Let me unmute you. Please go ahead. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Shri Bhagwan Uvacha, 
संन्यास कर्म योग भो तयोस्तु कर्म संन्यास कर्म योगो विशिष्य राधे 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 थैंक यू राहुल जी राधे राधे श्याम जी प्लीज गो राधे राधे श्याम जी राधे राधे श्री भगवान उच संन्यासा कर्म योग अस्तु कर्म संन्यास कर्म योगो विशिष्य राधे राधे प्लीज को है राधे राधे श्री भगवान उच संस कर्म योग श्रेयस करा भुआ तयोस्तु कर्म संन्यास्त कर्म योग विशेष Let's quickly take the remaining hands. Let's freeze the number of hands. And yes, Sandhya ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Turn on your video. You got chances of getting picked increase many folds. Go ahead, Sandhya. Okay, thank you. Um, Shri Bhagwanu, Shri Bhagwanu Vacha. Alkunji. Okay, Shri Bhagwan Uvacha, Sanyasa Karma Yogascha. तयोस्तु कर्म कर्म योगो विशिष्यते थैंक यू संध्या लेट्स टेक टू मोर हैंड्स या दिस वन मोर संध्या जी राधे राधे प्लीज को है यस संध्या जी राधे राधे संन्या सह कर्म योग थयोस्तु कर्म संन्यासात कर्म योगो विशिष्यते थैंक यू ओके सो मे मोर हैंड वी कैन टेक हुज वीडियो इज ऑन आई सी श्याम जी एंड यस श्याम जी राधे राधे प्लीज गो अहेड या राधे राधे श्री भगवान उवाच संन्यास कर्म योगश्च निश्रेयस करावु भव तयोस्तो कर्म संन्यासात कर्म योगो विशिष्यते राधे 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 ओके प्रागी टर्न ऑन ओके ना प्रागी जी या राधे राधे प्रागी जी प्लीज गो अहेड थैंक यू राधे राधे श्री भगवान उवाच संन्यास कर्म योगश्च निश्रेयस कराव भो तयोस्तो कर्म संन्यासात कर्म योगो विशिष्यते थैंक यू प्रागी जी हरिया जी विल मेक एक्सेप्शन फॉर यू होपफुली यू विल आल्सो मेक एन एक्सेप्शन फॉर अस वन ऑफ दीस डेज बाय टर्निंग ऑन योर वीडियो बट प्लीज गो अहेड या ओके क्विक रियल क्विक एंड देन मूव्स शाम ही राधे 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 श्री भगवान उवाच संन्यास कर्म योगश्च निश्रेयस करावु भाव तयोस्तु कर्म संन्यासा कर्म योगो विशिष्यते ओके सो वी हैव टू द हार्ड स्टॉप सॉरी बिकॉज़ वी हैव इनफ कंटेंट टू कवर लक्ष्मी जी एंड श्री रम्या टुमारो विल लेट्स रिमेंबर देम टू गिव देम प्रेफरेंस टुमारो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड नाउ Supreme Lord said, "Both the path of karma sannyas, renunciation of actions, and karma yoga working in devotion lead to the supreme goal. Karma yoga is superior to karma sannyas." Now, for the benefit of participants, I'm going to briefly touch upon karma yoga today as well, because we've been talking about, you know, purifying mind, senses, and all that stuff leading up to this discussion. But it's important to understand what karma yoga is, and what is karma sannyas, and what is the technical difference between the two. That is what we will spend some amount of time as well. I'll briefly touch upon that today, but let's get started with our topic of our discussion now. How do we 
purify our mind and senses. Right? We have been talking about which one would you prefer and we spoke, we started with the, which one did we start with? We started with the difficult one, right? Easy or difficult. Now, let's do a quick recap. Now, on this path, of course, so many things to do. That is a difficult option that we spoke about yesterday. So, what was that? Varnashram Dharam, you are indebted to all of them. Pitri, Devrin is there, Nririn is there to other human beings, then to sages, and then to other bhutas as well, living in earthworms and stuff like that. So, um, these rinas are something that we are obligated to. Just to justify our mere existence on this earth. Now, this is a gift that we have gotten from God. Just think about it. Did we do anything and decided that, okay, now I'm going to take on an avatar like a human? Did we do that? Did we choose the time of our birth? Did we choose the location of our birth? Did we choose our parents? Do we even know how our... Nothing. It has happened. Okay? And that there is an algorithm that is dictating that. And we are the authors of our destiny. And that perfect algorithm, the way it works is out of grace. God gives us this opportunity. But when this opportunity is given, something is expected <clears throat> out of us as well. If we don't understand it, just because of our sheer ignorance, we take things for granted. Okay, air, water, everybody has. Sun comes, so what's the big deal? Moon comes, our throat aids. All that is fine. So what, what's the big deal? I have my own problems. I have to earn money and take care of myself and go for the vacation. And that's all I care for. That's not a very smart way of thinking, especially when we are born as humans. So there's a much more deeper nuanced thought process that is needed to look at the way things are around us and understand the deeper principles governing this nature. We are put on this earth for a reason. And then they, these arenas are obligated, obligatory on us because we are extracting from, there are so many things that are converging together, making our existence possible and serving us as well. So we need to give back as well. In fact, it is a universal principle. When you give back, you get things automatically in return. And that is why there's a term ecosystem comes, right? Where we are serving each other. Everybody's serving. If you look at this, everything is serving. Except for humans who establish themselves as an ecosystem, right? At the top of the food chain as well at times. So it's very important to understand that we need to give back as well. And these rinas are obligated on us, but then it becomes very complicated, right? How do I do Pithririn? What are the rituals I need to get involved in? How do I get rid of Devrin, Rishirin, Bhutrin, Ririn, all that stuff? Yeah, you can do charity, be helpful, be, become a philanthropic and all that stuff. But how can we be absolutely sure we are truly doing the needful to the right extent and in the right frequency for us to say that, yes, I'm doing it well. It's very difficult to know that, right? So God understands that part as well. So let's, he has actually made it simpler for us. Now, if we look at it this way, um, to begin with, it is Adharma, one who is ungrateful and doesn't recognize the five debts. Which category do they fall into? Adharma. Okay, so in Kaliyug, in Satyug, people used to have sense, right? Because they were... Um, uh, their upbringing involved the kids getting trained on the Gurukul Pratha where they would understand the deeper secrets of Vedic wisdom as part of their regular education as well. Okay, So they would understand these principles. But in Kali Yuga, if you think about it, our primary education has no mention of it at all. At best, you will get moral science, but that doesn't take us very far. I've done more moral science and I had no clue what they're talking about. We used to laugh off all these concepts. Okay, some of these that we were introduced to. And, uh, but so that means that majority of the people, they fall into the adharmic category. Not because they are bad, it's purely ignorance. They just don't know anything better, right? So this is called as adharma from a spiritual standpoint where you don't even understand what your duties are with regards to this. And then moves to become grateful and performing sacrifice to these which is called the Paradharma. Now you get into the bodily duties. You start performing it. You're not only taking care of yourself, but your family, broader community, helping people out. So all those things are still at the bodily level. 
even philanthropy, doing charity, jap, tap, all that austerities that you perform, which is a good way of living, then you start getting into aparadharma because that dharma is not, not related to just living for yourself and understanding the bigger picture and performing your duties to the best of your ability. That gets into the aparadharma because now you are engaging yourself in the um, activities uh, obligatory on your body or for the fact that it's a hygiene criteria for justifying your existence on earth. Let me put it that way, aparadharma. Okay. If you're not even meeting that hygiene, it's like, okay, what a waste. You're making it difficult for yourself down the line, uh, not only in this life, but in the lifetimes to come as well. And then beyond that is called paradharma. Now, this is something which, which is now you transcend even beyond bodily duties, which is the highest spiritual duty towards devotion towards God. Now, if you are, it is said that ordinary people talk about things, material things, right? And other people gossip around. Then uh, a little more smarter people, they talk about experiences. A little more smarter people, they talk about, uh, you know, ideas, uh, innovations and stuff like that. And the most smartest people, they start talking about God. Okay. So it takes a lot, lot of smartness and intellectual capacity to be able to relate to God and start talking about it and acknowledging it as well. It's not a matter for dumb people. You will see the people who actually transcend, start transcending that they are actually blessed. Maybe because of you know what they have done or grace of God, sheer grace could be anything. But the point is that when you start developing or thinking about devotion to God, now you are talking previously you were just you know engaging in material stuff only which is called paradharma now when it comes to paradharma we, we have already looked at a paradharma what are the duties the rinas and all it's a fairly complicated thing to do right what does god expect now when we get to paradharma aspect of it it's it's much more streamlined and simplified for us let's try to understand that the lord krishna is saying that when you perform a sacrifice in knowledge it is better than the ritualistic activities. One is you are doing Om Jai Jagadish Hare, um, Tanman Dhan Sab Tera Kya Lage Mera and all that stuff we keep on doing, right? Which is mere recitation. If you're doing it as part of your ritual, that is, you know, that counts for nothing. Better than that is any austerity or sacrifice that you perform in knowledge with a proper understanding that is considered higher than a mere ritualistic activities. And finally, the sacrifice should lead you to the ultimate knowledge of understanding your relationship with God. How, when will you do sacrifice when you truly understand you are an eternal part of God? Your constitutional position is that of a part belonging to the whole. And because your constitutional position is being a part of God, in serving you will get. You shall receive. It's like hand serving the stomach and automatically getting the nutrients that it needs. So the Purush Prakriti concept is there in our scriptures, right? Purush is the Param Purush we all know, who's the big boss, right? The Param Purush is God. And then he glances at Prakriti and everything unfolds. Okay, so basically Purush is activating the Prakriti. And as he's the activator, energizer of Prakriti, he's the, he assumes the natural position of being the supreme enjoyer. But Jeevatma inserts itself and says, no, I'm going to enjoy Prakriti for myself. Right? That's when we become bhogi and that's where we have we are not in the natural equation at that point. And that is where this whole binding karma and all that cycle starts to unfold. We can still do the same stuff. All you need to do is tweak your consciousness around what you are doing. So let's get into the paradharma and, and understand what, what it means and how simplified it is with regards to what you should be doing. Now, Vedas have prescribed step-by-step -step processes for the goal from where we currently are to the culmination of a relationship with God. So now we have to introspect which quadrant or which, uh, uh, you know, where in this trajectory we currently are. Uh, you know, are we discharging our debts? Are we performing our duties? Are we limiting it to the bodily level? Is it a mix of all? It's an introspective activity. The bottom line is we have to move towards paradharma as best and as frequently as uh, and as as mo much as possible uh, for us to continue to progress in life. Now, let's talk a little bit about that as well. Now, how do we purify our mind and senses? This continues to be our 
topic so we spoke about the difficult path which is very you know so many rinas and everything is there let's today look at the other aspect of it the easier relatively easier path okay at least from an instruction standpoint the implementation might be now if you have a tree and you want to nourish this tree tree right you want to water this tree you have two options really one is you start watering it you know each leaf identify each leaf and start watering it and then maybe each fruit you start watering it and then maybe each twig you start watering it right that is one way of maintaining that tree or serving that tree now is this more smarter or you simply go and you know streamline your effort and and simply water the root okay so it's not exactly falling on root but you got it right so you water the root or you water individually which one would make more sense but of course right which is a more smarter strategy similarly when it comes to even if you look at you know uh, why does irs and income tax department collect stuff from us because they know we cannot reach out to every place where the funds are needed we cannot go to every rural a place in india or bharat or any country where they are collecting the income tax like irs in case of us and go to every road and every place where the funds are needed and and go and start paying there so what have they done they have created a centralized body you simply deposit your check and it gets funneled to the right waters wherever it is needed similarly when we water the root we we put it at the lotus feet of god then it will automatically get funneled to where it is needed okay so that becomes nirgun thing or a smarter thing right so it's an example of money that i gave right but when you devote your efforts you simply do devotion now one thing is you do devotion to this devta that devta for this thing i need this for this devta will do this one thing is of doing that other thing is you just build your connect with the supreme lord what are the root and every devatas and every but people would automatically be satisfied it's like you have a connect with the president do you really care about their cabinet ministers no they'll automatically be taken care of so you focus on building connect with the right authority directly and everything else is subservient to that only it automatically gets covered right even in it we talk about the principle of inheritance right when you do that the top most of the master class has pretty much everything in it so that's how you go about uh, this as well keep it simple around it bhagavatam says if one discharges the supreme debt to god if one waters the root of all creation there is no need of fulfilling debt to anyone else very simple okay forget about all the rent this rent that rent all that i mean just focus on your devotion it is that magic pill you pop in and it will automatically go to the places uh, you know where it is needed and you don't have to worry about anything at all now if you water each to reach all leaves of the tree just water roots root is bhagwan when you learn to engage in loving devotion with bhagwan then you are discharged you are discharged it's like okay god says okay no more debts are incumbent upon you at at all but the beauty of our scriptures is same thing message is it's not like you are at a logger heads or there is any conflict when it comes to bhagavatam bhagavad gita ramayana or any other scripture kathopanishad or taittiri upanishad right भगवद गीता इफ यू गो टू नाइन डॉट टू सेवन इट सेज यद करोषि यद नाशी यद युहोषि ददाशी यद यद पश्यसी कौनते तत् कुरुष्व मदर्पणम नॉट इज सेलिंग दैट वॉट एवर यू डू वॉट एवर यू ईट वॉट एवर यू ऑफर इज ऑब्लेशन टू सीक्रेट फायर वॉट एवर यू बिस्टो एज अ गिफ्ट वॉट एवर ऑस्टेरिटीज यू परफॉर्म अस ओन सन ऑफ कुंती डू देम एज एन ऑफरिंग टू मी सो वेन समबडी कम्स हु डज नॉट हैव फेथ ई से वट कैंड ऑफ अ पर्सन गॉड इज गिव मी दिस गिव मी दस ऑफर टू मी no he is not saying that because he needs anything from us he is saying that let me help help me help you because when only when you will do that will you purify your consciousness will you get closer to the concept of karma yoga will you purify your mind and senses and will you come be able to come to me he is just telling you that he doesn't need anything from us it's like child going to a father and saying can you give me 10 rupee 100 rupee Hundred bucks, and father says, "Oh, why do you need that?" He said, "I just need it." Okay, can you give it to me? So father said, "All right, I'll give it to you." And then the kid goes and buys a very wonderful gift for his father and say, "Happy birthday, daddy!" So everything belongs to God. Okay, it's, he doesn't need anything from us. He's just saying, inculcate the spirit so that you end up purifying yourself. Because otherwise, what will happen? You will do things for your own sake. 
you will continue to be selfish and you will con continue to suffer from this disease of me mine only and then you will not be able to expand your bubble you will not be able to purify your yourself you will not be able to fulfill the promise that i expect from you okay becoming you know increasing your bubble and one day become like him right it's in giving you shall receive here we keep on holding holding so that is counterintuitive but this is how it works let's move on um now these material debts like we said if you do devotional service to god you are already you know fulfilling those requirements now what are the conditions for that it has to be nishkam so this is a principle again it's a very deep principle and it has to be practiced will not come naturally to us because the kamata or the sakamta is so deep rooted in us at varying levels that we are not even aware of it but gradually we have to practice that pray to god and and you know start peeling those layers where nishkam means i'm not doing it for myself or i'm not able to ask anything from you god okay so when we do devotion we do it with a nishkamta if we have to ask anything from god that that has to be the you know the vyakulta of uh, seeing him darsh his darshan or not even darshan seva more seva for god that's the best thing to ask god okay end of the day we only have to do seva only so nishkamta is the one and then that like the sun sun is nishkam right it is it does not discriminate that hey i'm going to give you light but i'm not going to give you light if you are like this i'll give you light but if you are dirty i'll not give you light so it is agnostic to uh, wherever it is disseminating its light so that is nishkam then nirantarta that is an important concept nirantarta means what is nirantarta nirantarta is constant okay like pi life of pi okay so constant means it doesn't change it just remains constant that means um one another example that is given in our scriptures is uh, like oil when you pour oil do you see discontinuity somewhere no it is there is a continuity that co continuous stream is flowing how it it's not very simple to remember god all the times right and I'll, i'll get into the principles of karma yoga you'll say how can i remember god and work at the same time but the point here is that uh, that uh, feeling at the back of your mind has to be there like for example do we ever forget who we are does a mother forget that she is a mother even when she is teaching or doing anything no it is so deep rooted in us so similarly that that feeling that god is with me and he is my both my witness and protector has to be strengthened that you know you are carrying that with you god is always there he's not revealing himself that's a different thing but that nirantarta has to be there even in bhagavad gita lord krishna is giving that instruction to arjun where he says satat yukta nam he's saying sarveshu kaleshu that means every moment he's not saying sarveshu kaleshu uh, with an exception that okay he's saying no every moment so that that state we have to reach that is called nirantarta then we have ananyata okay ananyata like exclusivity a god is a perfectionist and very possessive in that sense okay more possessive than some of the heroes you would see in bollywood movies okay and they are crackpots anyways but god says exclusivity because what will happen is god has given us only one mind he has given us two ears two eyes right but one mind why but because if he had given us you multiple minds you would have said okay god one mind is reserved for you one for all my kids families and other secret stash that i have right we would have played trick with him he said no one either me or world nothing and when you have wiped off the last trace of worldly ambitions from yourself then i am yours right prem gali ati sankri yo me dwena samaye kabir das ji has said so it's it's either or okay then it's like exclusivity is what god is talking about as well okay so that is another thing so we need to diminish our secret stash over time uh, for us to get closer to that and then bhav yukta okay bhav is something personal like a toothbrush okay yes bhav so you need to have that personal connection and build that bhav talking about toothbrush it reminds me of a joke right so joke what was that yeah so there was you know husband wife who used to fight a lot and then um, wife would remain very calm and quiet you know i mean have equipoised during all those fights so somebody asked him i have ever never seen you 
fighting with your husband how do you maintain that poise all the times when he screams and yells and says all those bad things to you here it's very simple i use his every time he yells and screams i take his toothbrush and you know wash the toilet drainage and put it back that's it so that is how personal toothbrush is and bhav basically exclusivity and we need to have that personal relationship that we need to build with god that is very very important priti ji after one more and then i'll get come to your question and then karm rahit independent of karm yan so see this is a stepping stone rituals are a means to an end it is not an end in itself so the problem happens when we start worshiping the rituals itself right so let's say we are sitting in a yagya rather than building those sentiments that i am offering something to god we get hung up in okay my god this hand that hand what will happen i'm going to get punished did i miss something so all that becomes an empty rituals and a mechanical drill so rather than focusing on rituals if we focus on building those sentiments for god that is much more the quality is more important than quantity aspect of it here as well right it's like a heartfelt message that you give to somebody carries more weightage maybe not in the material world because we look at the outside or the externals but for god internals matter right they said he ate the bhav bhav poon uh, the peel of banana when uh, shabri uh, not shabri when uh, vidurani offered it to him because it was full of love so he doesn't so care so much about the they say that god does not care about the um gift of the giver he cares about the love behind the gift so this is how it goes like when vishad raj he met lord ram he you know he was a bheel is an ordinary person what could he offer lord ram but then uh, the 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 tribal women and they all collected some fruit and stuff like that and brought to lord ram and then those ladies were so sweet they brought some flowers and stuff like to decorate mother sita but they accepted it because because of the love behind it right so that is that is very important we should not get focus on the ritualistic aspect of but actually building the bhav around it so even when we do chantings it's not about how many rounds we are able to do you can do one round but if it bringing tears and that connect to your uh, connect with god in your heart that is much more important than simply striking it off okay i have done so much okay so that is a key it's quality over quantity and the bhav aspect of it which matters more than the actual activity okay that activity does not count for anything when it comes to uh, you know noting getting uh, god noting it down sitting seated inside okay i see few hands maybe some questions before i proceed further please go ahead yes uh, priti ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe i uh, was wondering then why did god gave us all this maya and the mind that stays away from him why didn't he just gave us a mind that's constantly attached to him you know like mm -hmm. why did he do all those things unnecessary you know I'll like ask preeti ji um uh, you have a daughter or a son right i have a son yeah okay so i'll give you two options so mm -hmm. one is you 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 give some pill to your son where your son will always love you he'll say mama i love you and he'll always be obedient to you and in holy care for you would you rather choose to do that or would you rather make your son make you know decide for himself with a choice that he wants to love you and serve you which one would you prefer uh yeah let him decide uh of course yeah so that but is then he is god like he is god so like uh, he created all this maya and us Mm -hmm. and then we are lucky to have swami ji and bhagavad gita knowledge but there are so many people who do not have this knowledge like my family they didn't have to. this they don't want to preeti ji everybody is perfectly situated where they need to be if you ask mm. them you need this knowledge you need to do something different they will say no we are happy we are very yes. convinced that there is happiness in this world because we know mm. some who has become happy and we will one day finally attain it either whether they think that way or not but they they just want to do that i'll tell you a story of indra indra is equated to a pig see he is a king of heaven hmm. now let's just say the his situation when you look at a king of heaven you can only ima imagine the kind of luxury he can enjoy an ordinary hmm. minister or a 
or a president or a businessman, when we go to their palatial houses, we say, wow, what a living, you know. Uh, you uh -huh. go to those, you know, people. Uh, so we get impressed so much. Now he is, he's the king of heaven. So you can just imagine the amount of luxury he can enjoy. He is equated to, when you compare it against the, the bliss that is possible in the spiritual realm, that luxury or that happiness that Indra can get is equated to a happiness of a pig rolling in mud. Uh -huh. So this is a story there. Naradji says, okay, he's like a pig rolling in mud. And he's told, hey, you know what? And by, by the way, he actually became a piglet in that life and he was rolling in mud. So he was told, you know, what are you doing here? Let me take mm. you to a better place and there are better possibilities there. He said, really? Mm. Yeah, really? He said, can you come along with me? And uh, he said, sure, I will come along, come, come along with you. So he starts taking that ping along. But on the way, the pig has a question, which is Indra. Mm. The... He said, tell me one thing, where we are going, will I get mud there? He said, no, yeah. there. So then what will I do there? So everybody is uh, situated. Right, right. Then they, well, they need to who, be okay. who you are worrying about when they will have a spark. Right. You know what? I need to explore some deeper questions. What am I doing in this love? Am I going to just simply earn, pay EMIs and then finally depart from this world with a mm. mixed bag of, you know, those sorrows and all that stuff? Yeah. When they start seeking those deeper questions, then the floodgates will open automatically for them as well. So everybody is perfectly mm -hmm. situated where they need to be. Whatever we desire, we get it. Mm -hmm. right? So God, this world is like a uh, God is like a kalpa vriksh. Not that He's going mm -hmm. to give us everything that we desire, but there are a lot of aspect of it is dictated by what we are choosing to do. We want to repeat here, and God is saying, but He has a perfect design where He has faith that you know eventually we will all get to Him one day. Some, I see. some people will go at a faster pace, some will crawl, some will run, some will take us. Mm. That is how it's meant to be. Thank you so much, Nitinji. No worries. Yes, Sajiji. Radhe Radhe, Sajiji, please go ahead. Sajiji, uh, I'm unable to unmute her. Oh, I see a question from. I'm able to. I'm able to unmute her. Please go oh. ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, um, Radhe 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 anyone? Everyone. Um, I had a question about you know, um, you you said that uh, you no know, do, uh, you know, one a part of karma yoga is to do everything with uh, with the remembrance of God and in God's name, etc. But some of uh, the uh, greatest atrocities in this world have been committed with um, God's name, right? So how, my, my question is a little bit more nuanced than a general mm -hmm. statement. So how do we uh, actually figure out that you know, the, whatever we are investing our time in and whatever we are doing with full devotion, dedication to God is the right dharma? True. I think it's a very nuanced question. I get that part. Now, you would say people talk about doing surrender, right? Or uh, doing it for the sake of God. What if a person comes around and say, hey, I'm killing because God came in my dream and he gave me these instructions. Or somebody saying, I'm Sharnagat to God and I have to do, like you say, the word jihad and stuff like that, right? If you ask them, they're also doing it for the sake of God only, right? So you're just comparing it with that, right? How do we know yes. what we are doing? We are not being brainwashed. Um, our brain is being washed, which is a good thing. Or are we being brainwashed, which is a negative connotation, right? So that's right. what your question is, right? Yes, yes. That's exactly it. Yeah, I think it's a good question. So that is where it is said that it any knowledge for it to be authentic, right? If we have to, um, let's take a leap of faith around its authenticity or is it coming from a bona fide source? It has to undergo three filter test. Okay. Three filter test is one, it is coming from scriptures. Okay. Scriptures. It should have a scriptural reference for sure. You're Second, it should have. Broken. It. That's it should... too broken. It's broken Sorry. there. No. Getting some background. Second test is it should have been stated by multiple saints, not just one. Okay. Multiple saints across eras. And third is your guru whom you have a good reason to believe is both Shrotri and Brahmanisht means 
theoretically well versed and practically realized is stating the same then you have a reasonable amount of assurance that the knowledge that is coming is a truth is basically a bona fide knowledge it is still not 100% as yet right and the fourth one is when you subscribe to that knowledge does it help you become a better person right do you go deeper inside when you um, uh, align to that knowledge and your own experience will reinforce that faith as well so of course you'll have to take a faith here and then of course you have to be a little uh, what do you call that uh, uh, you know god will drive you to the right people if you are seeking it for the right reasons as well right is is the message leading you to bitterness hate resentment or is the message uni unifying so some of that from your inside you will get those realizations when you go to that knowledge because god will not lead your path astray if you are doing astray if you are doing it for the right reasons so if you look at jihadis and stuff what is the prevailing sentiment others versus us they are bad we are good you know there is a bitterness there is a resentment there is a division spirituality doesn't say that at all right so that message itself is so deep and profound and pure that it will pierce your heart when you start subscribing to the right kind of knowledge that is how powerful it is and of course your own experience will strengthen it not what i say or what you hear but i've given you the three filter test which our scriptures talk about and secondly of course your own experience and then from inside you will say yeah this kind of makes sense i'm not being brainwashed but i am subscribing to something that is truly helping me and help me become a better human being at least i hope i answered part of your question at least No, you did. Thank you. Thank you so much. It does make sense. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So it is, of course, you have to take a leap of faith somewhere. Uh, but when you're doing it for the right reasons, see, th there are, of course, certain yardsticks you can apply. Is the knowledge leading you to become bitter by, about somebody? Is it bringing in resentment about some other person or tradition or anything? These are some of the very small, basic, fundamental things. If it is not, it is helping you to love people see divinity in all and taking your spiritual understanding to another level that itself is a good litmus test for you to know that you know what i'm at the right place but if somebody is telling you you know go kill that and me versus the other somebody's bad bitterness resentment of course something is very strongly flawed there right and somebody's luring you here we are talking about not to ask god anything right you talk about suicide bombers they are given a lure that they will get you know thousand hoors heaven and what not in their next life so you look at the message itself you know once you start going deep you'll understand the uh, the difference in the depth of the message itself and and then like i said the the strongest proof is in your own realization and the fact that god is seated within he will not let your journey go astray when he knows that you are seeking the truth for the right reasons that is the strongest proof you will get okay let's take some more questions Yes, uh, thank you, Nitin ji. Very well expressed. Yeah, thanks. Um, Sandhya ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, Sandhya. Um, Radhe Radhe. So, so in this slide only, uh, the four points so uh, seem like they are mandatory, must. The fifth one. You say I, must or must? What did you say? Must as well as must. Okay. But the fifth one. Mm hmm. I'm not sure if that's meant. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be karm right. Mental engagement has to be there. But karm it can... is, uh, basically, uh, it's not dependent on rituals, I would say. This is what it means. Bhakti is independent. Okay? Devotion is a Maharani. It is independent. It is not dependent on anything at all. So it is not, um, you know, contingent upon doing the ritual as such is what it means. Karam is fine if you're doing it. It's not like don't do karam. But it is not dependent on karma. Is essentially what is the key message here? Karma rahit. Thank you, thank you, Sandhya ji. Uh, I see hand raised from Palguni ji also. Yes, Palguni ji, please go ahead. Please go ahead, Palguni ji. So, yeah, Karam, you we will you. discuss in the next. I think it's a pretty interesting discussion. So, we'll put a full stop here. Karam, you, Karam, Sanyas, together we will do in the next session and bring about the contrast and stuff like that. Maybe a few more sessions would be needed to conclude this conversation. Yes, Falguni ji. Uh, no, my question is more to this 21 day challenge because I have downloaded the lap and now it says day one is over. And I was thinking day one was 17th and 17th USA. So, let so, me tell you a story then, Falguni ji. Uh, 
once there was a dog whose name was Rover and the story is over. So although the day one is over, you can still go in and redo it. Okay, oh nobody's okay, okay. stopping you so, from that. No, but uh, when I I have downloaded the la app and I'm trying to reach that uh, the in, like you know what I have to do on that day, it is not allowing me to do it. I don't know why it is showing error. Uh, do yes, you need to? She's at trouble. She's good. Yeah. Please update the app. Uh, there, update there the app. Okay. Release. Uh, so yes. if you have the older version, you might face issues. So everybody, please update the app, and then you should be able to access the first two days of the challenge. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yes. You follow, yes, I best can best see best both best. the days here, day one and day two. I can see both of them. And yeah, you can access okay. both of them. Okay. You brought up Falguniji. I would encourage, in fact, request everybody to download this app and, and start undertaking the challenge. It's, it's a 15-minute commitment every day. But it's a very uh, structured way of um, igniting that you know, relationship with God and taking it very systematically on a day to day basis. So please do that. Do check it out. Yes, Rahul, you had a question. Radhe, Radhe, Rauji, yeah. please go ahead. Radhe, Radhe. Just wanted to add two more words from Srimad Bhagavatam on this slide. One is Ahetuki and Apratihata. Ahetuki is causeless and Apratihata is the same thing, Nirantar, which you have mentioned. Yeah. Ahetuki Kripa. Yeah, thank you, Rahul. That's very nice. Thank you for sharing that. What else? Yes, Sandhya, you had a question too? Please go ahead, Sandhya. Ji. There were questions in the chat. Can I read them? Sure. Um, Smita ji, Nitin ji, why is Hinduism not growing at the pace of few other religions? And why did Bharat have to change? Why did we not retain our original culture? Like, why did Bharat have to undergo destruction of culture? So, why did see our time horizon or uh, uh, the reference time is very limited, right? So, and it's a cyclical process. Sanatan stuff is eternal, which is going to remain forever. You know, for as long as God is there, creation is there, Sanatan will remain. Okay. If you look at uh, Bharat as such, it was plundered with the an express pur purpose of converting the peoples and, and dis demolishing the temples and the religion itself. Did it happen? It did not happen. When it was done with that purpose only. Now, why is it happening? God only knows this. Maybe it's, it's showed to show that there's resilience or it is something you can't wipe it off, stamp, stamp out of, you know. Uh, the the earth itself. Um, one way of looking at it is that it is in the advanced stage of decay and you never know, it may reclaim its old glory back. It is cyclical. Nothing is perpetual, right, in this world. Just because you are sitting on a gold mine does not mean you are uh, rich because you are not. You may not even be aware of it. Now, we are in Bharat. We are brought up to the stories of Lord Ram and Lord Krishna, but how many of us have actually read Bhagavad Gita? How many actually get to read Bhagavad Gita? Right? How many actually value the tradition and the things that we have had? Very few. So yes, we definitely have an advantage in that sense, but that does not mean it gives us a, uh, what you call that, a natural uh, advantage or, or vantage point um, with, with that regards, right? It's just like this. You, you might get the good cards to begin with, but if you're not playing those cards well, it doesn't matter. So it is said when it comes to God's grace, which this is also considered one of the grace, getting a birth in Bharat Varsh, because you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, orient yourself to some of these philosophies. It comes very naturally to you, accepting Lord Ram as God, as one of the avatars, Lord Krishna, though past times, we have seen that when we were growing up. So it comes very easy. And if you look at, uh, you know, some of the people from other traditions, for them, it's a new learning experience. So to, you already have a, a head start if you think about it. But uh, interestingly or ironically, still, I don't think very, very, very few people would have, although we have a treasure chest of knowledge and wisdom, very few people, few people actually take the next step to explore that or to add it, add that dimension to their lives. You look at so many um, um, Indian Americans here, how many of them would actually like to read Bhagavad Gita? No, right? So that is how it goes. And why is it happening? I don't know. It's a cyclical process. If you look at the great British Empire, 
it used to rule the world and now it is reduced to a state smaller than uttar pradesh so it is a cyclical process right hunasang was there china used to be at the peak takshila nalanda was there bharatvarsh was at the peak so it may come back again the full circle our time horizon is very limited so we cannot use it as a yardstick to say why it is happening right what what do you know about 1000 years so ami ji's university comes vedic wisdom expands who knows we we can reclaim the takshila nalanda days right anything can happen so it's a cyclical process god only knows whom to bring up whom to bring down when to level things let's leave big things to big people only we focus on our spiritual journey only and just to add now ram mandir is ram mandir ayodhya you know so it will seem like years. yeah it will seem like that lord ram is about to manifest right amazing i see some of the promo promos on dd it is it is very very awesome and i've heard that people are actually coming and requesting people can you please come uh, to the temple you know they are going door to door it is like they they had been waiting for it see lord ram if you look at it his life was a serial disaster right throughout so much so that even in kali yuga he is having real estate issues to fight for until now he finally gets his uh, birthplace right restored to him so god doesn't mind that but yes it's our sentiments the prevailing sentiments and anything that helps us build the devotion and not lead to fanaticism that is the key thing so there is a thin line there over zealousness about your own religion should not turn into fanaticism where it starts bordering on hating others that should not be the case because spirituality unites just because we take pride in our tradition does not mean we belittle and take a you know what you call that uh, a stance of superiority around it doesn't work that way because devotion mm-hmm. is not a proprietorship of any particular religion caste creed or human it's a science between humans and god and any anybody and everybody who's eligible and ready for it can stake a claim for that okay hope that put um, some perspective yes around. smita ji smita ji says thank you very much nitin ji good explanation thank you and there's one more question Mm-hmm. from madhu chanda ji what are the three filter test can you please repeat apology it escape my thinking train okay the first filter is uh, it should be coming from scriptures right it should have some kind of a sub- scriptural reference it's not like i am saying it so you believe me no you give me some scriptural reference because that is establish its its veracity okay it is from this scripture this book this page whatever that may be bibliographical reference around it second is multiple saints have said that surdas tulsidas narsi mehta kabir das they are all saying guru nanak dev they are all saying the same thing it should be corroborated by multiple saints either all the saints were on dope smoking weed or they were saying it for a reason because they have seen god right we have to believe later more than former right multiple saints have said and then your guru is say telling you the same message now what else do you need to put faith on why would you rely on what you have heard from people or google or what your nani or dadi has told you right these three filter tests is good enough for you to take a a leap with assurance i would say um one more question from shri ramya ji mm-hmm. how can we transform karm yog to seva how can we transform karm yog to seva see seva is a natural manifestation of love for someone when you love someone you want to do something for them you don't simply sit and say okay i love you but you don't do anything about it so when your love manifest seva is a natural manifestation of it right in fact sadhana what what sadhana do we do do we simply sit in front of god the one of the best sadhana is just to ask for seva now if we are asking for seva in our sadhana not doing seva what are we doing in say sadhana so seva is a fruit of your sadhana right so even a bhajan is there right nit seva mangu shama sham teri na bhukti nahi mukti mangu mai so the best one of the best sadhanas is you sit and see we have spoken about five bhavs for god god is my king god is my master god is my friend god is my uh, you know mother father or child and god is my beloved so when we talk about any of these bhavs what are we think when you say he's my master what are you going to do you are my master just look at him no you will do something right i want to offer something to my king i want to offer something to my master to my child so seva is a is very natural or a spontaneous manifestation of your love for anyone so that is why i keep on saying pick up seva even if it's a small seva start building those sanskars it will help you in long run because end of the day we only have to do seva and if you don't have that sanskars then it's self seeking it becomes selfish at that point as well it becomes sakam bhakti at that point 
So Nishkam is the highest level, right? You see on the screen selfless. Selflessness is the is a great virtue to inculcate or build incrementally in ourselves. So Manisha ji, did I did I conf, convince you or confuse you? Sri Ramya ji. Oh, Sri Ramya ji. There's a saying in English: if you can't convince them, confuse them. So <laughs> I hope I didn't do that. Yes. Um. Questions over. Uh, the fact that you have put selfless and ananya on the screen. This reminds me of the Seva teams. Seva teams, where is our Seva teams? They were supposed to do something, which team's turn it is. So let's open it up for all Seva teams and see who takes initiative. Individuals, we had opened it up for individuals. So Maharajji's Jagat Gurutam Divas happened recently. Uh, Seva teams were supposed to give presentations, started with Vinamra team, I believe. Right? So nobody has come forward so far. Okay. It's not a bashing session, but please come up as a team or as an individual. <laughs> Put it in the feedback tracker. We'll put some three to five minutes for you, whatever you want to present or talk about. So, and and the teams whose individuals or participants come forward, they will get credit, of course. So please do that. Um, just wanted to remind that. Yeah, and just to reiterate, it's no pressure surrounding it. It is more like an opportunity to learn about Maharaji, who is a supreme master of the world. No pressure, but if you take pressure, I think that'll be good. Okay. Yeah. Divine stress. Divine stress. It is called divine stress. It is uplifting and purifying. It does not uh, release cortisol. God takes care of it because he's seated within. In fact, it, it gives us uh, more grace. And probably those an anandamine, there is an anandamine, another amine. Okay, I've just come up with that term. It releases that hormone, which is very good for us in the long run. So take that divine stress, pick up a seva and come forward and present something uh, put it. Put your name in the feedback tracker. Say I'm I'm from so and so team, and I would like to say talk, present something, and and we'll we'll carve out some time, you know, over the next few weeks. Okay, I think you managed to inspire Swati ji already. She's part of the Vinamra team. Wonderful, and, Swati ji. I and look forward has, to your presentation. Thank you. Here goes. Yeah, she message that she wants to do it today, but I that's what I was about to respond. That was too fast, Swati ji. I didn't expect that. <laughs> you caught me off guard. <laughs> not ready for it <laughs> let's do it tomorrow i think after the quiz right so swati ji please uh, prepare the uh, lyrics as well so that everybody can understand uh, what you're going to like we can share your little presentation or something so that right. yeah um and falguni ji has raised him again to bother you but i went to the app and it says that document has been deleted so, okay, let's uh, uh okay. Ji, I'll connect with you offline on this. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. No problem. Okay, are we good then? Uh, please fill out the feedback tracker if there are any questions. I had planned to cover a bit of Karam Yoga today, but uh, I think it will be we can cover it in the next session along with Karam Sanyas because now we are getting into the concept of uh, Karam Yoga and Karam Sanyas. How do they stack up against each other? Okay, what are the different levels? Uh, the similarity, the intersection that we said, what is the overlap between two uh, and what is the, uh, what you call that cosmetic difference between the two as well. That is what we are, we are going to talk about and then what Karam Yoga actually entails. Okay, we will have that discussion next week. This Thursday, which is tomorrow, we'll have our quiz and this Sunday, we have the live telecast of uh, that uh, uh, of Lord Ram, so which will be an event aired live from the a temple and we have some events planned so we will not have our session this sunday uh, we will meet on monday evening tuesday morning india just wanted to remind that you know in advance because that session uh, will be will have to be cancelled um, but nevertheless i'll remind it tomorrow as well let's move on to our devotional segment then uh, do we have any hands we can do this couple of lines and then we can wrap up our session for today anybody any volunteers? I see Sandhya Ji's hand raised. Sandhya Ji, please go ahead. Sandhya. We can have new hands as well. It's pretty simple actually. Once you get the rhythm of it and if you can read Hindi and even not Hindi English also you can do that. You can give it a shot once you get the tune tal around it. Yes. Sanjay, you're on a roll. Whenever you say many people get inspired immediately. 
सुमिरन कर ले मना छिन छिन राधा रमना जग सुख क्षणिक मना हरि सुख भूमा अपना जग जल में नी मना श्रम ही है आखो मत ना सुमेरन 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 कर ले मना चिन चिन राधा रमना very nice and yeah beautifully sung okay thank you sham ji please go ahead राधे राधे श्याम जी प्लीज राधे राधे थैंक यू सो मच सुमेरन कर ले मना छिन छिन राधा रमना जग सुख क्षणिक मना हरि सुख भूमा अपना जग जल में नी मना श्रम ही है या खो मत ना सुमिरन कर ले मना छिन छिन राधा रमना राधे राधे थैंक यू सो मच दिनेश जी राधे राधे प्लीज राधे राधे सुमिरन कर ले मना छिन छिन राधा रमना जग सुख क्षणिक मना हरि सुख बुमा अपना जग जल में नदी मना श्रम ही है या को मतना सुमिरन कर ले मना छिन छिन राधा रमना थैंक यू दिनेश जी टिया जी राधे राधे प्लीज कॉल राधे राधे सुमिरन कर ले मना चिन चिन राधा रमना जग सुख शनिक मना हरि सुख भूमा अपना जग जल में नी मना श्रम ही है या को मत न सुमेरन कर ले मना चिन चिन राधा रमना थैंक यू राधे राधे प्रत्युषा जी राधे 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 मेरन कर ले मना छिन छिन राधा रमन जग सुख शन कमन हरि सुख भूमा जग जल में नी मना श्रम ही है या को मधना सुमिरन कर ले मना छिन छिन राधा रमना देवी 
थैंक यू प्रत्युषा जी सुमिरन कर ले मना छीन छीन राधा रमना जग सुख क्षणिक मना हरि सुख भूमापना जग जल में नी मना श्रम ही है या को मथना राधे राधे गोविंद बोल राधे 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 गोविंद बोल सुमिरन कर ले मना छीन छीन राधा रमना okay so thank you everyone for another engaging session and for this dessert segment that we always have i think meaning is pretty apparent here world happiness is fleeting it is temporary it is limited in extent and it is ever diminishing and then expecting happiness we talk about this example it's like churning water and expecting track and he never it's never going to come out if you simply believe in this word half of the problems will be put in perspective right what are we trying to extract here nothing's going to happen finally and in the end only result of your effort is the effort this is a very important thing right maharaj ji says it so simply shram ka phal shram or shram so if you become is you will have to do more work if you become ceo you will have to do more work so in material world when you put shram when you put effort the result end result for that is more effort shram ka phal shram and still we remain be shram right so anyways all right so thank you everybody radhe radhe good night good day i'll see you tomorrow so all the best for the quiz and uh, we'll we'll continue with the session so thank you radhe radhe from my side Good night. Thank you, thank you, Nitin Ji, for such an another awesome session, and thank you everyone for your wonderful participation. Thank you. Thanks. Radhe Radhe. Stay blessed.